Good morning, everyone. Today I'm going to share the results of uh, our experiment. This is the first season yield of Cresshaven peach grafted on semi-dwarf and pest-resistant rootstocks. So um, everyone around knows that um, in Alabama, peaches are the number one uh, fruit crop commodity and also a local favorite. So a lot of customers love eating Alabama produced peaches. But the peach production uh, does come with some challenges. And here I listed the most significant of those challenges in peach production. First of all, um, most often uh, we're experiencing some freeze and frost damage uh, late in the spring when the crop uh, has set, especially on early uh, ripening or even mid-season ripening cultivars, and that often causes uh, a lot of damage and crop loss. And in recent years, we're seeing a problem that is becoming more and more significant, and that is the insufficient chilling accumulation. And we recently had two seasons, and the second one, the insufficiency was as deep as probably up to 60% for some cultivars. Another issue that we're encountering is that our peach orchards are being trained to the conventional training systems, um, which of them are most often used are, are open base uh, or open center. Those systems are not uh, proven to be that highly efficient that um, some of the newly developed systems for high density orchards. Another problem that we're experiencing, it is the labor cost and labor availability and that is combined with land encroachment and uh, lack of virgin uh, replant sites for peaches. This relates to another problem that we're experiencing, and this is uh, we're having a lot of sites with history or high incidence of formularia root rot, or um, we're experiencing this disease, peach tree short life. Both of those diseases are um, causing a lot of loss in, in uh, peach production annually, not only in Alabama, but um, that's what we are most concerned with, our production in Alabama. Also, we're having bacterial and fungal diseases. We have nematodes and insects that are causing problems. So uh, we're looking for solutions to some of those problems or to alleviate some of the um, problems that we're having with, with our challenges. Um, you probably are aware that uh, Alabama is part of a bigger uh, multi-state uh, national study uh, looking at different uh, rootstocks for different tree fruits. And uh, in 2017, we have initiated a peach semi-dwarf rootstock study. Uh, there are 10 states involved in that study, and also we have international collaborators. Um, but uh, this study is looking at uh, seven different rootstock cultivars that are, that are semi-dwarf and have the ability to control the size of the orchard or the peach tree. Um, this experiment is planted at the Chilton Research and Extension Center in Clanton. And the planting distance we selected for the study is 6 by 18 feet. This provides a density of, the, of our orchard of to, um, 405 trees per acre. That's not considered a very high, but rather this is a moderate high density. This experiment is trained to a perpendicular V training system, and you can see on this picture how our trees are looking um, in this January of 2020. So I wanted to highlight the rootstocks that are included in this experiment. And um, we have three of the rootstocks of controller series. They came from Davis, California, and those are controller six, controller seven, and controller eight. All of them are considered to be semi-dwarf rootstocks, and all of them are hybrids between 
Haru blood and Hokinawa peach. So they are 100% peach rootstocks. What is more important, at least to me, is their resistance to root rot nematode. All three rootstocks have this resistance. The other two rootstocks that we're looking to evaluate in our conditions in Alabama, those are coming from um, Agrumelora iberica from Spain. Those are root pack 20, also known as density pack, and root pack 40, also known as nano pack. Both of those uh, rootstocks are interspecific hybrids. The first one is a hybrid between plum and almond, and the second is peach by almond. The third rootstock that we're going to look at, it is MP29. It is a clonal plum peach interspecific hybrid that was developed by Dr. Beckman uh, from USDA in Byron, Georgia. This rootstock was released in 2012. Uh, it is pretty new on the market and it is pretty interesting one because it is shown to be resistant to peach tree short life, armillaria root rot and root rot nematodes. So our controls in this experiment are well known Guardian and Lowell rootstocks. Our cyan cultivar is a virus indexed crest haven. We started uh, collecting data for this experiment in 2017, immediately after we planted the experiment, and we continued throughout the seasons. But uh, for the first time, we collected data on uh, the yield in 2019 because we needed to keep the trees without the fruit on them. We needed to uh, defruit them in the first two seasons make sure they establish their root system well. So uh, on this chart, you can see our data for the three seasons that reflect our trunk cross-sectional area. And for us, it is important a measure because it shows us the vigor of each particular tree or each particular rootstock. And as you can notice, uh, we have data for 2017 uh, listed here in the blue bar. Uh, data for 2018 are listed in the yellow bars and the red bars represent our data for 2019. It is not a surprise to see that Guardian and Lowell rootstock produced the largest trunk cross-sectional area throughout the, the years. But what is the pleasant surprise here? We can see that all of the experimental rootstocks were growing at a slower pace, like um, they were weaker growing that Lowell and Guardian. So that really proves to us that in our environment, they're also um, having this semi-dwarf quality. So our MP29 rootstock was um, the weakest growing rootstock among all of those uh, that we tested and uh, of course much smaller than our controls Guardian and Lowell. In 2019, as I mentioned, we harvested the fruit for the first time. We started the harvest season on July um, 12th, and we had four different harvests that span over a 10 day period. And the last harvest was conducted on July 23rd. So we harvested every second or, th or third day. And uh, here is the data that presents the total yield per tree that we were getting uh, in 2019. And on the picture, you can see some of the crop of our experimental trees. So again, it is not surprised that uh, the trees that were grafted on Guardian and Lowell produced the higher yield. But uh, what is a pleasant surprise to me was to see that actually trees that were grafted on MP29 were not statistically different than uh, the trees that were grafted on Lowell. So um, 
this um, this is a pretty good sign because Lowell obviously produced um, um, pretty high um, yield per tree, even though it is the weakest growing rootstock in this experiment. Um, from this graph, we can also see that controller six, seven, eight, and also root pack uh, produced um, very low, um, very low yield in 2018. But when, when we look uh, and determine uh, yield efficiency, which is uh, how we come up with that, we divide the total yield uh, in kilograms by the trunk cross-sectional area for each tree, and that's how we uh, determine uh, how much fruit per area is being produced. So our yield efficiency is obviously the highest for the trees that were grafted on MP29 rootstock. Only lower uh, yield efficiency was closer uh, to that of the efficiency of MP29. The trees that were grafted on root pack 40 definitely had a very low yield efficiency. As I mentioned, uh, during 2019, we had conducted four harvests and we collected data uh, and separated the data on each of those harvests and then we totaled the data uh, on mean fruit size and that's how we determine the mean fruit size for the season. Uh, obviously from our records it is shown that controller 6 uh, had the largest mean fruit size in 2018. On the bottom of this uh, uh, table you can see that uh, the trees that were grafted on root pack 20 uh, had the smallest fruit size on average and that was um, an average of 203 grams only. What else we are able to notice here, we can see that controller 8 and root pack 40 had larger fruit size than the trees that were grafted on lower, and also controller 7 and MP29 had larger fruit size than the trees that were grafted on guardian. And this is kind of, um, in some cases, you can say against any logic because uh, guardian trees are uh, very vigorous and usually this is related to the larger fruit size produced on those uh, trees. But um, you can see the data. Um, almost all of our uh, tested rootstocks produce mean fruit size larger than guardian. Another observation that we made in 2019 relates to the number of cracked fruit that we found per tree. So we uh, counted and recorded uh, the cracked fruit uh, on each of the four harvests and we came with the total number for the season. Uh, you can see from this chart that root pack 20 had close to seven cracked fruit per tree on average. Uh, MP29 had about five cracked fruit per tree on average, and those numbers were considered high when we compared to our uh, trees that were grafted on Guardian and Lowell, which had between one and two cracked fruit only. We have uh, another good news here. We observed that uh, the trees that were grafted on Controller 8 uh, had uh, about one and a half cracked fruit per tree on average, uh, which uh, shows the uh, ability of this cultivar to, produ to, to prevent this cracking of the fruit. In general, this is a pretty young study and uh, we are continuing to evaluate um, uh, all the responses of those trees that are grafted on different uh, size controlling rootstocks. But in general, uh, up until now, we can see that trees that were grafted on MP29 were the least vigorous trees in our experiment. Also, trees on MP29 had the highest yield efficiency, and um, that is one of the wonderful qualities of this, this particular rootstock. 
also uh, trees on controller 6, controller 8, and root pack 40, um, they had larger fruit size than the trees that were grafted on our controls, uh, Guardian and Lowell. Root pack 20 and MP29 uh, had the highest number of cracked fruit, while trees on controller 8 had a relatively low number of cracked fruit and it was similar to Guardian. Trees on root pack 40, MP29, uh, produced the greatest, uh, had the greatest effect on uh, advancing fruit maturity. When we compare the number of um, fruit that we harvested on each of those four harvests that I mentioned throughout the season, we noticed that over 90% of the fruit for Guardian and over 75% of the fruit of Lowell were harvested in the second part of the harvest season, while about 70% of the fruit of Fruit Pack 40 and MP29, they were produced in the first half of the season or within the first uh, two uh, harvest dates. So um, for now, we are thinking that probably those two rootstocks, Root Pack 40 and MP29, could be used uh, as a tool by the grower, as a tool to um, time um, the ripening or uh, to target certain markets. Also, with this study, uh, we are intending to evaluate the labor cost and eventually uh, any savings that could be provided by uh, the perpendicular V uh, and by um, the, the rootstocks, the semi-dwarf rootstocks. We uh, just collected data on the pruning weights um, and timing for pruning that is needed uh, for the trees that are grafted on different rootstocks. And we will continue to measure the timing that is needed to, um, to hand um, thin those trees uh, later in the season. And also eventually we're going to time the harvest time for each of those trees and uh, we, we, we're going to measure what type of uh, economical benefits uh, the new rootstocks and the training system can provide to our peach growers. With that, I'd like to thank for your attention.